Chung International Conference Center. It's Mining Week 2015 under the theme Science and Engineering Solutions for Safety, Security and Success in Mining. Our next presentation, continue on this theme, is uh, a presentation on the considerations in preparing Guyana's Action Plan, Reduction, Elimination of Mercury Use. This is by Mr. Samuel Wright. Mr. Samuel Wright is an Environmental and Project Management Specialist with over 30 years experience in Guyana and the USA. He has a master's degree in geological engineering from the University of Arizona. Mr. Wright provides environmental management support to mining, water, and infrastructure projects, including environmental restoration and assessments. Clients in Guyana include the IDB, the GWI, GGMC, and Region 10 RDC. Mr. Wright's recent focus includes watershed management, water safety plans, ESAs and ESMPs for water treatment plants, and environmental policy and environmental codes of practice for mining. And Mr. Wright is also the gentleman who is tasked to help us in preparing our national action plan for mercury. Mr. Wright. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. And, and my presentation segues nicely into what Mr. Delgetti had to say. Um, the presentation is on, I've been tasked to prepare a national action plan for mercury, um, funded partly by um, the World Wildlife Federation and is being handled by GGMC. So I'm very, I'm very pleased to be part of this process. Um, like all of us, or most of us in Guyana, sometime or other our ancestors or other people were involved in mining. My grandfather who's from Buxton, for example, and he would cut cane, but if you needed to um, to do something, someone's getting married, or if you need to um, add something to your house, you go and do a quarter or something in the back down. So we have all have the tradition of dealing with gold. The National Action Plan for Mercury, uh, you know, we, we will look at, in presenting it, it's what, what were the drivers for the plan. You know, Among the miners themselves, there was talk of um, mercury-free mining, and I think Mr. Um, Wolford kind of corrected them to say it's not mercury-free mining, it's mercury-free processing. Um, mercury mining is a, a different, it's a misnomer. Um, anyway, the National Action Plan for Mercury looks at uh, ways in which we can end the use of mercury in mining. But we were, we were tied somewhat to the um, Minamata Convention this is a larger look at, at mercury. And as we go through the process, we'll see, for example, that mercury exists everywhere in Guyana, even in the pristine areas in Guyana, where there is no mining, we're finding mercury. So it raises the question, if we're going to address mercury or uh, see where, well, how you've been exposed to mercury, we have to have an understanding of what the background conditions are within the environment. So it's not as straightforward as we thought it would be as we look at the, uh, look at the, uh, the investigation. But I'll, I'll take you through the process. Um, this is, this is the, the this cover sheet for um, the actual report we're preparing on the National Action Plan for Mercury. And you'll also see that it's tied to update the codes, updating the codes of practice. Um, that's for mining. There's a, um, environmental codes of practice that have been generated since about 2005. I don't think they've been put in place yet. They're waiting for some other activities, policy decisions to be made, but, but it's a part of the process. Um, and the presentation I'm going to provide this afternoon, this is a general overview. We look at mercury, a general overview of mercury. We look at the mercury currency in Guyana. We also look at the Minimata Convention. And I then look at the actual um, uh, plan for, for, for mercury, okay. uh, general overview for mercury. Mercury is, is highly toxic. It's, it's a neurotoxin, it, it's a, a, a type of the nervous system, and metal mercury is one of the most pernicious um, forms of mercury. Um, again, it's, it's the, the, the folks, it's um, through inhalation, ingestion, absorption through skin, and consumption of foods. You'll find, for example, some of the researchers saying not only is mercury um, 
uh, ingested through eating like fish, but things like cassava and certain grains like corn are uh, ways of, of getting mercury into your system. So, and particularly in Armenian communities where you use cassava and other, other kinds of staples, there's another way of getting mercury into your system. So when we talk about de um, getting rid of mercury or the effects of mercury, it's not just a matter of mining uh, activities, but also what's going on within the environment itself. Okay. Um, again, mercury is a, occurs in most natural processes. It's a natural process. There's, it's human, but it, because there's so much mercury in the background, in the soil, for example, even if you're doing none, uh, if you don't, you're not using mercury in the processing of gold, once you start excavations and you allow what with high levels of rainfall in Guyana, it means then you activate the mercury that's in the soil, and that in itself can be washed into the river, but it goes through the whole process of bioaccumulation. So the, the, the effect of mercury in an environment is, is not as, as straightforward as we thought it would be. Uh, but most, the, the fact is, even though it's mercury, um, in other parts of the world where there's more industrial activity, there's a lot of release in mercury by burning certain fuels, um, cement, producing cement and other kind, kind of products that allows mercury to go into the environment. Uh, but, it, but the fact is most of the mercury releases to be fine is um, anthropogenic or has to do with human activity. Again, the vulnerable populations for mercury, in this case is um, women and children, um, including uh, and also persons with high High, high degree of exposure based on uh, occupation. And also in coastal populations because coastal populations tend to use more fish. And fish is one of the, the most uh, readily means of uh, ingesting mercury. Um, in Guyana, as I said a couple of minutes ago, uh, there's a widespread occurrence of mercury in the sediment, soil, and in the fish. Uh, we found the mercury in urine samples in Armenian populations and in the miners. And also mining, uh, mercury occurs in, in, due to mining and in mining areas and also pristine areas. We talk with mercury in Guyana and most, most readily we, we, we relate mercury to small and medium scale mining. The fact is mercury is used in, 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 in processing of gold um, and the, 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 the result, the negative results of using mercury is not necessarily related to merc, um, it's not like, so, so uh, it's, it's related to the behaviors of the miners where they use retorts, as Mr. Delgadia, do you burn, do open burning and mining, um, where do you process the, 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 um, the, the amalgams. So it, it, it's, it's not just mercury, it's, it's the practices surrounding mercury. Okay? Um, we have a problem coming up with respect to what do we do with the disposal of mercury uh, and mercury waste. Okay? Uh, the main matter convention that Mr. Mr. Delgadia referred to. Again, it's, it's a right to protect human health and the environment from mercury releases, particularly anthropogenic mercury releases. It's, it's an uh, international treaty, it was, um, was promulgated in 2013. The government of Guyana signed this, this treaty in 20, 2013, um, and the then Minister Passat signed that in Copenhagen. Um, interesting enough, um, that treaty was signed, but when we were trying to develop the action plan for mercury, we found, for example, that the Ministry of Health who should have been a, an, an uh, important partner in that process, were given no directives to prepare to implement the convention. Uh, this is just knowledge, and not, it's not, I'm not being political necessarily here, but certainly if you expect to have a national action plan on mercury, where certain places like the DGMC and the Ministry of Health have to be involved, somehow you think that if you're signing, uh, and this is one of the problems in implementing the, the, the convention here in, in the uh, National Action Plan, is that many of the agencies who should have been directly involved in instituting or responding to the signing of the convention were not given any directives at the highest level to get involved in it. So you sign a, a convention which is binding, legally binding, but yet still the community, the, the agency, the stakeholders who should be implementing the convention haven't given any direct directive how to, how to move forward. Okay, the convention has, has a series of articles, and not all the articles refer to the condition, the situation in Guyana. So of, of the 28 articles, um, I'm just emphasizing the ones that have to do with Guyana is mercury sources and trade, mercury added products, artisanal small scale mining, um, mercury waste, um, capacity building and transfer, and also public information and education and implementation plans. I think Mr. Dalgetty referred to the fact the need for information, sharing of information and a public information uh, program. Uh, and particularly what's important to us is artisanal mining, 
And when you look at what's uh, artisanal mining in Guyana and other parts of the world, um, it's not the same thing. In Guyana, there's much more regulations. Um, to get into mining, you have to have a permit. Uh, so it, so what, what, what we normally see in, in photographs of this horrendous conditions of artisanal mining in the world it does not exist in Guyana. But yet still, it, it is a concern. And the Minamata Convention really focused very heavily on those conditions. But it's, it's most of the articles still reflect, uh, uh, apply to Guyana. It's the, the convention required that we prepare a national action plan for, for dealing with, with, with mercury used in, 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 in um, artisanal conditions. But also, we will find that the national action plan we are putting together, it has a, a larger scope. Because, for example, because mercury occur, occurs in the background, but also mercury occurs in, in the, your dental work. It uh, occurs in switches that you use in your homes and many other pieces of equipment. This, the disposal of those equipment itself, if not done properly, would, could result in mercury getting into the environment again. So the National Action Plan we're looking at is a wider look at mercury uh, um, occurrence in Guyana use and disposal. Again, this is, this is our convention, uh, Article 7, dealing with the, the handling of um, small small scale gold mining uh, health, health aspects again um, the, the if you for example out in interior Guyana you get symptoms of mercury poisoning poisoning what do you do most of the health centers or the hospitals in those areas have don't have the equipment or the ability to test or monitor or prescribe treatment so uh, uh, a health pro the, the, the national action plan we're looking at would involve having the Ministry of Health playing a larger role in preparing, um, monitoring the, the, the health of the minors, monitoring the health of the impact communities, and having the ability to respond to any crises, a crisis dealing with, um, with, with, with mercury. So a part of the national action plan, uh, both in what we plan to do and what based on the, the Convention has that you must have a, a, a pro in dealing with health aspects. Okay, and the national action, the action plan. The sort of critical activities we're looking at, looking at the national action plan for mercury, and it includes, for example, setting milestones for reduction in mercury, uh, use of mercury. Uh, there, there's talk of, of banning banning mercury. There may, may be some legislation to do that. But when the, the minister signed the convention, he proposed a, a, a phased reduction or elimination of mercury. So in, in our action plan, we're looking like a period of 10 years, uh, starting supposedly from 2014. So by 2024, we go through a, a phased um, re uh, reduction in the use and elimination of mercury. Okay. Okay, uh, provide information and incentive for the use of mercury technology. There has been a, a mercury fund that Mr. Adekar referred to, and uh, there was some activity before. I think one time it was a billion dollars put aside for mercury free technology. I, I'm not sure what's happening to it, but those are one of the incentives that have been, been around to, to, for that transfer. Um, we need to end trading and, and, and importation of mercury. That's, that's a very interesting aspect of, of the whole experience because uh, Mr. McCray did some studies on, on importation of mercury. And his research suggests that if you look at the amount of mercury being used, based on what we accept as a ratio of mercury to gold produced, much more mercury is coming into Guyana than the gold is being produced. There are a couple, different, a couple various explanations. It could be that the mercury coming into Guyana is being transshipped someplace else. Uh, it could be that the gold that's being de declared is not accurate. Uh, or also the, the, the situation is that the, or the ratio we use for amount of mercury to gold produced is not accurate. So th there's this reason for investigation to get some good answers in that. So however, the, the mercury coming into Guyana, uh, as recorded by the customs and GGMC, really does not reflect mercury use in Guyana. That gives us an, an, an issue to deal with in a national action plan. And they need better regulatory oversight with respect to the use of mercury and, and mercury products. Um, Critical activities are involved in educating the miners and the communities to protect themselves, and this is very important. We have to empower them to protect themselves, and not just depend on GGMC or the legislators, uh, legislators or uh, to, to, to look after that. We also need to get a sense of what what is the extent of gold uh, of mercury distribution in Guyana. Uh, if you're going you need to know what the background is, or else we really cannot say if mercury we're finding 
be a tainted fish, or be a mercury finding um, that people are being exposed to in, in hair or urine samples is actually coming from activities having to do with mining or if it comes from ingestion of other crops or so on. So we need to have a better sense of the background uh, and distribution of mercury. Okay. Um, we need to provide support to the mercury, uh, to the miners, and we need to um, develop and implement an awareness and education program. Okay. Um, goals and objectives. The greatest, the best, one of the goals we have, primary goals, is to create a mercury use profile. It's, it's a concept that's being introduced. And a mercury use profile in Guyana says this. In mercury in Guyana, mercury use has to do with importation of mercury, uh, legislation, oversight, um, the use of technology, um, trading in mercury, um, the work of um, health programs, the, the, the work of um, the, the Ministry of Health and other, other agencies. So we, we said that in for them, 2015, the mercury use profile would show that there's not, much, there's not enough control on the use of mercury, uh, importation of mercury. Um, you would also show that the Ministry of Health right now do not have the programs to support the help, the, the, the work of um, or protect the workers or, or, the, the, or the miners. So that's a part that we're looking at the mercury, mercury use profile that says by 2024, we expect that the, the, the mercury use profile that, that using that basic description would reflect more of what the Minimatical Convention is asking us to do. And in order to get to that mercury use profile in 2024, we're asking certain relevant agencies like GTMC um, to be more involved or put, be better um, develop, help develop mercury technology. We're asking for more incentives to support the miners, uh, more miners be using the incentives, Ministry of Health will be acting in a different way, and we would be using, and probably the rate of recovery from, from, from gold mining would be higher than it is right now. So that's a concept we're looking at. In order to get to the mercury use profile that reflects the Minimatic Convention and the action plan, then we have to, certain relevant ministries or agencies will have to be acting in a certain way. One thing is interesting, for example, we found in, in some of the research that Guyana is a transshipment for waste mercury. And I, I didn't realize this was doing some research. Apparently, um, there's some sh ships coming out of uh, French Guyana. They do the exchange ships in, in, in Guyana. So, there's a, so at one time in the process, there's actually waste mercury on the, in, in Guyana has been going on to, to, to French Guyana. That raises an interesting s situation. Since, we don't, since dealing with waste mercury is a, is a concern for us, if you already have the process of transshipping mercury waste to someplace like uh, France where they can handle it with better technology, maybe we should investigate, see if we can send some of our waste along with that process, okay? Okay, um, we talked about uh, a mercury's profile, um, some of the national strategies that are being developed. Um, the, the goals and objectives we mentioned earlier is achieved through an implementation of planned act responses, as I said, by relevant agencies, and those relevant agencies are GGMC, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. It, what, what is the right name now? Okay, thanks. Um, Ministry of Health and the EPA, okay? Uh, and they, they, these agencies, their collective mandates and purviews actually address most of the issues having to do with mercury management and, and, and protecting of the environment from mercury. So the, the, the goals and objectives we are repeating is that we already have the agencies, we already have the mandates to, to, to um, make, make these changes as, as required, okay? Um, the process we in preparing the National Action Plan you have it being coordinated by natural resources and the environment. You have the consultant uh, filling the role. And you have a working group of the Ministry of Health, GG, Ghana Gold and Management Association, and um, GGMC. And we have the stakeholders uh, of, of interesting uh, of EPA, uh, Toxic Control, and American Community, Civil Society, and Service Organizations. Where we are right now in preparing the plan is that the draft plan is being pre prepared, it's being reviewed by the, the working group. And we were just about the process to have a, a large scale uh, involvement of the various agencies. Um, and I think I'm just about done with my time, but I may have some other slides. I think we've generally covered what we intend to do. You? Yes, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, okay the, the, the National Action Plan prepared in, in two forms. You have a draft plan, which is already prepared, and the final, final plan. The draft reflects the preliminary consultation we have had with the various agencies, the working groups. And the final plan would have a, involve a larger consultation with, with the general public. Okay. 
Um, so there's some clearly some risk involved in it. Um, we need to have some clearly stated goals. We need to ready and committed involvement of stakeholders. We need to uh, implement the awareness program and the health programs. And we need availability of funding to support the miners. And it comes back again to that $1 billion um, uh, fund. Uh, I'm not sure where it, it's going, but it really needs to be activated if we're going to move ahead with the action, national action plan. We need to know what, what the funding is available and how best to use our funding. I, 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 I'm hearing that in, with the, um, there may be different ideas of how it should be used. Maybe in our discussions afterwards, we can have some idea where, where that is going, but it needs some, it needs some attention. Okay. Um, again, we talk about more pre mining. We'll, we'll talk about that hopefully in the discussion. Um, and that's it. Thank you for your time. I hope we did shed some light on the National Action Plan for Mercury. Question I have is the project. Um, Good afternoon, sir. I just wondered, uh, there doesn't seem to be anything, I'm not getting the numbers, whether when you exposed to mercury or red or yellow or red or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, what simplistic indicators are there to sort of help you to pull some guidelines on whether you're safe or not? You're talking about thresholds, uh, thresholds of tolerance? No, uh, 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 symptoms. Well, you didn't mention some symptoms, but I thought when you said numbers, he was talking about what level of exposure. Um, I, 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 I don't want to venture into that. Um, they, they, and a lot of times when they, 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 this clear clinical indication of mercury poisoning. But most times what, what we're seeing in Guyana is a combination of uh, exposure to mercury, some other um, uh, exposure to some other uh, 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 symptoms of some other disease or some lack of going on. So the, the, the important thing is to have the health centers in the areas where the miners and folks are working so that the, the, the health professionals with a better position to say this is what is going on and, and refer them to some place where they can get better treatment. Yes, sir. Yes. That's right. So, there are rumors that people done that underground storage for the mercury, buried stuff. Well, they, some of the work we've, we've been doing, we think that if you look at one of the graphs we didn't show, is that about 2011 there was a spike in importation of mercury. And it was thought that maybe that spike had to do with people who were anticipating the banning of mercury. So they purchase a whole lot of mercury just to store. The store, yes. <laughs> and I, I know, just a minute, I know one Sorry, no. friend of mine who really got into a scam, or was scammed, because she was told that maybe if she bought, helped to buy some of the mercury that's coming in, she can really, literally resell it in, in French Guyana and, and make a good profit. But she's still, while she passed the money, she's still waiting for the mercury to come. Uh, so, so, that process. so there's a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, that might be part of our process because they normally come, they normally come to GGMC to give some kind of no objection. And what we've started doing is inquiring where they plan to have this property that they're importing be marketed. And we've noticed a certain stop in the flow of letters that come to the no objection bit because it's a good statistic to keep to. Uh, so I, I, didn't, I didn't hear from you any um, like measurements that have taken place. Um, in the Ministry of Health or wherever. Mm -hmm. I, I probably have to follow up here now, mm -hmm. you know, what, what measurements, um, the, what, you see, because I don't think that we will have acute mercury oh, the veins of somebody. Mm -hmm. What happens is that people just begin to feel lazy mm -hmm. and don't, don't feel like walking, mm -hmm. you know, or they, they work. And so I, I, I would hope that the other would deliver what measurements are taking or, or what measurements are planned. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, other, the other fact is that um, the, in terms of the importation of mercury, mm -hmm. GGMC has already reduced the, um, 
Um, read, read the TTF to you. Have you ever been reducing the, the, the equation of my commercial share? Because they have to get permission from TTF. Mm -hmm. And I know that that has already begun. It varies about a year or more ago. Yes. And we could get numbers for that. Yes, but yeah, yeah I, I agree that GTMC is to begin to pay more attention to, as Mr. Noah says, for the applications. But um, the end of is generally porous. Um, and one of the yes, things... The, the question is, what measurements have been done? Well, I'll, I'll answer the, both questions. But you're talking about the that GGMC is, is acting actively involved in, in monitoring and reducing the amount of rugby coming in legally. But the fact is, if the borders are porous, if we don't have agreements with neighboring countries, then you still will have mercury coming into the country and defeating the very purpose you're trying to do. So I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, GGMC is being attacked more responsibly in, in this matter. But the, the fact is, on the ground, there's still a chance of mercury coming in through other sources. Okay. Um, with respect to the, the Ministry of Health has really been heavily involved in planning this national action plan. And they have a program in which they will be involved in um, not only dealing with, with, with um, mercury, uh, but also um, programs to reduce our com combat alternatives to mercury fillings. So that, that's one process. But they also, with respect to, they put together a program where they'll be monitoring more actively the, the miners, uh, a program that monitoring miners' uh, health, uh, monitoring the Armenian communities, the exposed communities. There, there is a program to get information you're talking They don't have that information right now because it was somewhat disjointed, but a part of the action plan that we're preparing, and you get a copy of what, what we, we can always get a copy of the draft plan, and there's very detailed work that the Ministry of Health is prepared to do to get that information and analyze the information uh, in the coming years. Let's introduce uh, uh, another, another question, sorry. You haven't said whether, I think Venezuela has already begun banned work, okay? Yeah. And you haven't said what, um, what information comes out of Venezuela that will be of assistance to our efforts? Uh, what, 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 what we're saying in the plan is that at the level of the, of the foreign ministry and, and the level of the, um, the, the GGMC counterparts, they need to start entering that information. Right now, information is not being exchanged in where we know that it has to be done. It's part of the proposal of the International National Plan. Now, remember, this is a plan to solve the problem. Uh, and that's what the National Plan is doing. We are not yet. Um, engaged in, in implementing the plan. That is what's coming next after we have the plan accepted. Mr. Sorry, it passed. It passed. Oh, but is it because of the question answered? Because you committed the man first to set up the plan. Ah. <laughs> I didn't hear that. That's you, not you, true. Yes, you committed the CI before the question. Before we know, you can't really have a point here that we said you are going to be first. Anyhow, my. Ministry of Health as part of their program um, are planning to have more if you cannot ha if they cannot have standing health centers to have more visiting um, practitioners going into the areas on, on, a, on a regular basis to get information. They really need um, they, they really need to build a better database of what's going on, and that's what they plan to do. They, they recognize that in some areas there's no health centers at all. Yes. They train to go back to that community. Right. But many have leave the health force and just yes. went back to the community and just went back to the mining. Yes. What is being done about that? I'm not sure what's the what's answer to that one. <laughs> but it's <laughs> certain something to be noted uh, that has to be addressed. Mr. Wilford?
Medicine Room. Yes. And it was the scientific words they use around that on healthy uh, Yes. Deal with that. Talk about it has so many micrograms and it satisfied your health standards. And and I'm concerned that uh, we need to make sure that we have scientific documentation of what we're talking about. So if in the national action plan, if we could just spend some time, put some money to the collection in the scientific part. Do we have any documentation on the number of people who have been affected by mercury that we have been talking about all these years? How many health centers, how many doctors have departed the work of poisoning or citizens of there? If we could get those numbers and just talk about it. You also mentioned the, the testing. How many hospitals or health centers have the capability to talk about it a bit to uh, examine people and report them? And then you mentioned fish. Uh, the study that GTMC did with uh, funding from SEAL, but from Yenga, was a very comprehensive study. One of the things they tried to look at is the correlation of fish with fish in the diet with uh, the people who are working in the field. Yes. Now, you may be working as a miner. And you may be showing symptoms of mercury, but you call them shark starfish that you can soak and eat. And I have been trying over the last year and a half to get information on which agency in general checks the fish. That we can hear. I know years ago, when I was in Canada, you could get almost daily reports on the level of mercury and tuna. And in the larger, uh, it's almost daily reports. And recently I checked that out of Florida, you could get those reports almost daily with an advisory as to how much, how many grams of fish you could, you could eat. We don't have anything like that. And it's quite possible. It's quite possible that some of our shark and seeing that we make salt, we can send it to the miners. Maybe that's a problem. They, Maybe that could contribute to the problem. But I don't know that we have enough scientific data documenting that there is a major problem. As a, as a, we need to just get that information documented and put it in the public. If you talk to the Ministry of Health. Uh, no, but no, no, no. It's, that's, that's an introduction to my comment. Okay, <laughs> I wasn't asking to do that. Or let me put it this way. When we spoke with the Ministry of Health about these same issues, um, Ministry of Health had a program um, kind of disjointed with monitoring what's going on with mercury, collecting data and so on. So but part of the plan that they were involved in is actively actively engaged in collecting the data you're talking about. And also also to set um, science science based um, numbers uh, for based on mercury reduction or dealing with the impacts of mercury. So that's that's what, that's why you want the Ministry of Health in. To that my conversation with some of the people from the health sector, <laughs> talking to some medical doctors, they don't have sufficient evidence from the people they treat that there's any serious effect on minors or anybody else on the cause of the use of mercury on a wide scale. Yes. Like two a year, five a year, nobody told me that. I'm not saying like two a year, five a year. <laughs> But we need to have those numbers. Other thing is the, the uh, naturally occurring mercury. You did mention that we create the problem by just doing excavation work in you know, the hospital at my room, and they got the place and so on. Slash on the ground. Because they naturally occurring mercury. And I think we need to focus heavily on that. Because uh, the geological environment, and the geologist can correct me if I'm wrong, the geological environment, uh, gives rise to an assumption that we should find naturally occurring mercury. And with the chemical work that uh, GDMC and other agencies and companies have conducted, 
suggests that uh, there is naturally occurring work uh, in terms yes. of uh, sulfides. And incidentally, the, the, your chemist, Bruce Pesetas, I don't know if he's still the uh, petroleum deposits make right to uh, this is okay. Yes. So if you got petroleum deposits from French Guiana from Iraq, we would expect that other water would have these emanations and that fish might be. So I think when we're talking about minimal convention and reducing and eliminating the support, we will have to make sure that we don't suppose that the biggest problem is these small miners. Mm -hmm. Focus on that. If, if um, one question, if, what, what's happening right now is that, is that we're building an awareness of mercury, impacts of mercury, the potential of mercury to impact the environment and people's health. Um, as as we get more and more information, it's becoming more and more apparent that our approach to mercury, as you said, at one point when you talk about mercury problems of mercury problem in Guyana, we point to mining. It was automatic. As we begin to look at the information, as more and more studies are being done in pristine areas, and you're finding mercury occurring and finding fish with mercury in areas where there's been no mining historically, then we begin to realize that there's a larger issue here. And, and there's a lot of research going on in French Guyana throughout the world. Um, so what we need is uh, a different approach, a different view of it, but also to be collecting the data so we can make better, more informed decisions about mercury. And that's some of the stuff that the Ministry of Health is doing. But one part of it, Part of the, the, of the National Action Plan that we're preparing is also to do an environmental assessment. We're putting in EPA and GGMC to put together that program, start developing that systematic approach to collecting data on what, what kind of contamination exists nationally Please indulge me with it. Yes. I, I, you mentioned switches and other things. And our green program yes. to bring in these, these yes. other types of things. Most things have more than three to five milligrams of more each one. Yeah. And you can't find any way to find anybody to collect your own fluorescent lamps or your, your fancy energy saving lamps. Right. So you could properly dispose of five milligrams of more yeah. each one. Yeah. Uh, and in response, one of the plans that's going on right now is to everything being imported into Guyana, it's being suggested right now, coming into Guyana that has mercury, we have to label. What, how much mercury is included, that's been proposed. How much mercury is in, in, included in that product so we can keep a track of what's coming into that. But well, yeah, but you know, again, I said, we, we, we're building the process to keep it with mercury. So for yes, uh, yeah, uh, yes. Mr. Evan Poussard? No, I was just going to ask that. I, I, kind of, I just got a standard kind of, because I know that our officers in the field do monitor for the use of um, retorts. And the interesting thing is, is that the, uh, the statistic for the use of retorts and having retorts and properly equipped for deal with mercury is a fairly good statistic. Mr. So Wendell Allen is behind there. It's a fairly healthy statistic. So it bothers me sometimes that, as you mentioned, when you hear about mercury and mercury poison, the first finger is mining. I suppose we'll get to the stage just like um, when you talk about forestry, <laughs> the first thing you point out when trees are cut is mining. Uh, Dr. Sirish, I recognize you, but I've got um, Mr. Fletcher, then Mr. Um, Rutherford. Thank you. It's possible to divert the cyanide, the big problem in Guyana, according to Dr. Chin. What he says is that in Cassava, Yes. You have cyanide. That's true. Because we have been consuming cassava for centuries. And we have been dying. Well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the kind of cyanide that kills you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it has dying or something called population control. We need to help your population again. Totally dismal thing. What I want to make is that what we would really like to see is some reports, something saying that by the end of this month, we will have a little report saying what the miners have to do to have this precaution, what precautions we must have. I like to not about numbers, 
and uh, my chemical friend over there, uh, who may not be a mathematician, but he understands that numbers are important. Yeah, well, Mr. Fletcher, that's why the code of practice is about. That's why the code of practice from the environmental division. That's why the code of practice is about, and that's what they've been saying. If you're going to deal with mercury, whether you're going to be, uh, whether you're um, a, a, a gold, uh, a jewel or whatever, this is how you must treat it. Is it in the first hundred days? No, it's already in place. We've been practicing, we've been working in the code of practice for, oh my God. Mr. Redford? I wanted to touch a little bit on my experience from Mr. Redford. Like he seems to move in the goalpost where the miners is concerned. They have unscrupulous miners who shy the mercury all over the box. All they put in the place. We don't see what to do. So don't try and ship the goal to the <laughs> um, Okay, Dr. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to weigh in on the, on the uh, bulbs. When you look at the amount of mercury that are in those bulbs and how distributed they are, it's a little bit disingenuous Oof. to suggest that mercury proliferation in our environment, and it does proliferate in is as a result of things like light bulbs. The primary source of mercury in our environment is mining still. And there have been numerous studies, including the one that we did, the WWF, which showed mercury, high levels of mercury in air follicles, high levels of mercury in fish. And these are in the communities of Arakata, Manchus Ridge, and Port Kaituma. That is in a room. Well, we didn't, we didn't study that area. But what I want to say is, I agree with you, there's money to be made, actually, in collecting bulbs for their metals and for their mercury, because mercury is still used in switching. And so there's good money to be made by collecting them. So there might be an opportunity. But by far, the incidences of mercury in our environment are from mining, and the gentleman is entirely right. No matter how much you use the retorts, we do see people taking mercury in buckets and throwing them into the school. And we've got to stop that only by education because I don't think those people understand the impact on their health and the fact that once mercury gets into the environment, it stays in the environment. It doesn't come out. Very, very difficult to clean mercury up. It bioaccumulates and it pervades the food chain. So I think we have to great we still have some presentations to do. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is good. No, I think this is vital. Right, this is good. This is good. Professor made a statement that I'm not sure that on the basis of free business, he really should be made. Uh, and that is my concern, which is what I expressed earlier. We need to get solid scientific data. I commented on the fact that the report said that scientific reports here on 10 levels of mercury. What we want to hear is what's the standard? Yes. When it satisfies the world health standards, when it always fits in there. It's nice. Nice. If we have people shine buckets of things, we want to know the quantity they shine. We want to know the effect when it was all collected and cleaned up. We want to know if there's a crisis. We want to know how many people are doing it every year. That is the scientific information we need. But that's all I'm saying. And, 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 and I'm and saying, in addition to that, we also have this. That was just that's fair. I'm not well. that's and, fair. And, 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 and the, 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 the point we're making. Sure. Next. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to say something yeah, about say something. Commissioner Wolford. <laughs> Commissioner Wolford's presentation is quite frightening because B. I like to eat no fish. Just eat cod. We need legislation. If we have legislation to ban the use of mercury and go for other technologies, okay? Much of the problem is the But if you get them and the use of the new technology. But but we did we did mention that as a part of the National Action Plan for reducing mercury use, is that it will be looking at what legislation needs to be changed. Uh, even, and even, and this is going to hit the GGMC, 
completely. Then we, we expect that GGMC was providing all the site and the monitoring regulatory control. We would expect that in 2025, on the way to 2025, GGMC's program would be reviewed uh, by some audited by some folks outside of GGMC to see how effective they are or how they can be improved so we can better get better results in the process. We, uh, so we're looking at um, the miners, Golden Air Miners Association are involved in the process. And it's, it's a discussion we're having on Mercury and we cannot assume that uh, even though we're saying that mining contributes a large um, percentage of the mercury in the environment. I mean, that's what you look at all the literature in the world, it says that, but we still have to be, make it Guyana specific. What is going on in Guyana? What do we understand? Because even we talk about artisanal mining, the, the artisanal miners in Guyana are, are not the prototype of other parts of the world. So we, we begin to have a discussion, let's have an honest discussion, and don't be afraid to see where it takes us and we try to solve the problem. I agree. The, the legislation issue, I know, it's always easy to make legislation and we don't have necessarily all the rudiments and instruments to deal with alternatives, you know, and, 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 and I am fearful that we, it's too easy to cut and paste and not get it right for you. And by no means am I trying to trivialize what legislation can do to make a problem like mercury uh, go away. So, but I just, I just be cautious. Whatever you legislate, whether, well, we got legislation against guns, and there's so many guns around that aren't according to what I've been told. You know, so. <laughs> you know, where we are right now, we're just preparing a national action plan for mercury. Um, we have prepared a draft document, and the next stage is for wide and inclusive consultation. consultation. So what we make available, the draft document will be available to the public and those who are interested. And based on your comments and discussion we have, we'll produce a final document with your inputs involved in the process. One last question, Mr. Applewhite, please. Um, my question is basically with respect to the um, support mentioned for miners to yes. transfer the technology for public processing. Um, I would want to ask you in that draft document that you would have been involved with, what are some of the concepts or what are some of the ideas that is expressed there as relates to how you can utilize the funding that may be available so as to um, reach the objectives of this plan of action? Um, the, the one thing we mentioned is this um, mercury free mining fund. That's it's, it's one billion dollars. I don't think I'm sure it's not enough. But the, the the group that's working on it are looking to see what's the best way of using those funding. No, uh, I think my question is more specific to your work, mm -hmm. in the sense of in your plan of action, mm -hmm. you would have looked at okay, for us to reduce mark reuse mm -hmm. or eliminate mark reuse in another five to ten years, mm -hmm. then this is what we propose to do. Mm -hmm. I'm asking, do you have anything proposed in your draft specific to the miners yes. and specific to the utilization of funds mm -hmm. so that it can address um, whether it's a not, not mark free processing alone, mm -hmm. but a whole other host of concepts. So I'm asking if that is in there. It's, it's, it's in there um, when we look at a, a larger view of why miners um, are not responding to the work that GGMC has done over the years. Like I said, there's a code of practice, the laws are in the books, and if miners are not responding, why they're not responding? Um, one of the things we're proposing that maybe we need to get more into um, mining co-ops so that you can they, they, collectively you can deal with the needs of the miners that if there's just one or two miners working independently. You can train them better, you can get resources to them, you can build better infrastructure uh, to support the mining, and also you can also deal with waste in more effective ways. That's Good. one of the things. So I'm glad that you brought that particular point out, mining co-ops. So if you're talking mining co-ops, then you're talking about three or four miners joining together their resources <coughs> whether it's their land being adjacent to each other and they want to collectively develop this larger plot of land 
and so they might be able to approach for funding to set up, yes. let's say, mercury free processing systems. Mm -hmm. And of course, in order to support that initiative, it comes back to a more fundamental point of evaluating mm -hmm. or prospecting what is in the land. Correct. Because Correct. unless Correct. that is there, yeah. Yeah. then you will not be able to go the way of co yep. So okay. I would like to suggest, or my suggestion is, that in your work in the future, that you consider the idea of putting some of the funds that has been allocated towards doing prospecting and utilizing methods to improve our understanding of what is in there on these lands for miners. Mr. That, Boyd, that's a suggestion. Mr. Boyd, thank you very much. The mining school will be considered as a, as a catalyst for that. But I think that what Mr. Wright, and we put him on the spot, I think what Mr. Wright is trying to say is that the plan is still very much a draft. And the conversation will happen. The discussion will happen. So please, you will be notified of when that conversation no, will happen. No, that is not the point. The point but the is, point is that... No, you, you, you misread my point. No, no, no. My point is, humbly so, is that Mr. I would Boyd, like to suggest... Your yeah. suggestion is noted. Oh. But we have a, he said it on four of the answers to the question. Okay. It is a draft. A very, very, very drafty draft. And Please let us recognize that. And also, also, also he, he, mentioned, he, mentioned, he mentioned the mining school. And in looking at some of the responses that are required to deal with the issue, is that the mining school have uh, a certain amount of courses, amount of training, their distribution of who they train. So all that is in the plan. We're asking about where they're involved in the mining school. We already joined the home. You're going out the door. Thank you very much. I, I think we have to close. I know that there are many questions. Mr. Sider Wright will be around and you can engage with him if he pleases. <laughs> but thank you so much. I know it could have been a, 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 a teaser for everyone to yes. have to say. So thank you very much. Thank you.